I need I need to I feel like as far as working with Mavcore, I'm sorry, but working for working with Mavcore, it is it showed me that these same students, you know, same little kids that I that I you know that I used to be, the the, the same dude, like I'm sorry, but the guy, it's his boy. I mean, his name is Dwayne and, and he's my student now. And I look at him and I see me so much, you know, real timid, kinda hang with the certain people and, and they are, there is there is friends, you know, but he's he's really the most timid out of his friends, and I see him getting you know bringing that outgoing part of uh, out of just because of now for you know that that was me, and I wish that I, I'm trying to get to a state where I can come back and I can give back to now for whether it be a CA a CI or maybe I just you know give him some money or something when I get enough. It gave my first exposure to teach. I like it. Sometimes it gets kind of hectic and kind of, kind of, it's kind of stressful sometimes. But I like, I like being able to, to help to say to a student that, yeah, that's that's right. Why don't you, that's that's perfect. Keep going and, and looking at their faces and, and seeing that they 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 know something new that they didn't know before I told them before I helped them. I love that feeling. One thing is tell the world. This, this program, it's not a six week program. It's not, it's a lifetime program. It's getting, it's not just getting you ready for, getting ready for life. It's gonna stay with you as long as you wanna stay with this program. I mean, as long as it takes. Professor Khan, he's gonna be there. He's just that type of person to the world. I mean, math core, sooner or later, this, war, this is going to be like, uh, bigger than just the city of Detroit. Sooner or later, math core is going to expand. It's going to be a statewide program. Or then it might even get to where similar programs across the country pop up. Sooner or later, and I just hope I, I'm, I'm a part of that. I hope that I can be, be a part of that, that, that expansion. People in this program, they don't they don't hire people who don't care. I mean, they the feeling you get when you know that some something is wrong with your student and they just won't tell you. It's like you have it's like a little sister. See, that's tell you. I don't have any sisters or brothers. You know, I had the past when I was young. I didn't get a chance to have them, so that means I won't have any nieces or, or nephews or anything like that. I'm, I'm all about myself. And I feel like with the math court, every single team, I mean, I'm a teammate now. I have 10, I have 10 sisters and brothers in that team. And 14 if you add the TAs. I mean, that's like a family. This is not, this is, this is not a bunch of strangers in a room trying to learn math. This is a family growing up together, six weeks at a time. So you see why he's my hero. Yes. Um, he's, he, I think what he says is very profound. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tremendous results from on this program, and uh, the the students come in to the math core, and we test them every year. We've been doing this for 17 years, and the mean score of what on the seventh grade achievement, what they should have learned through the sixth grade, um, is somewhere around 30 percent or less of what they should have should have learned. We test them again at the end of six weeks after they've hung out with Dante and his friends. And uh, they do homework every night, and they get a lot of positive support for that. The mean score every year is over 90%. Uh, over 90% of these kids are graduating from the same bombed out high schools for which the, the graduation rate is typically under 50%, maybe as low as 33% for, for males. Uh, and so something, something is working. And the one thing that, that is inescapable is that these kids have all got the, 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 the 
the wherewithal to do this. All you have to do is to change their expectations. Now, uh, Dante said, uh, you know, sooner or later this is going to be a bigger program, and I want to be there when it happens. Well, this was filmed in 2003, and some things have happened. Uh, one thing is that uh, uh, the math core team wanted to see if this would run five days a week in a real school. I mean, doing this on a college campus for six weeks in the summer is good, but maybe it's something weird about these two guys or about being on the campus or whatever. So they, they ran for five years. They ran the uh, middle school, University Prep Middle School, right around the corner here. The kids came in uh, barely able into the, I guess it was going into the sixth grade, barely able to add whole numbers. They, maybe some of them could subtract. That was it. They went out doing eighth grade math. And so we, we know it works uh, in a regular school setting. And uh, before we did that, actually, there was a thought of trying to take over a middle school in the Detroit public school system. And uh, the superintendent of schools du jour uh, told President Reed and me and Dean Paul Wood, uh, no, when we asked, could we do it in a middle, middle school? Why? I don't know. But anyway, we're, we're back now. Robert Bob has rolled into town. And he's been talking to uh, uh, Jay Noreen and others, including Steve Kahn and Steve Ilmer. And uh, uh, we, uh, well, before that, we established this, the Center for Excellence in Equity and Mathematics, which is the research arm of this. I think what we learned in terms of, of how to do this is, is fits in the capital R as well as the capital U of the Urban Research University. And uh, just this fall, we started <laughs> teaching mathematics at Western International High School, the, whole, the entire ninth grade. In other words, we're running that program with a couple of folks that have come out of the math core operation. And also at the Amelia Earhart Middle School, which is adjacent to it. So it's, we're trying to build a, a local community. This is the Skillman Foundation kind of model. Uh, and we want to expand one grade per year in both directions until we have we've taken a local uh, DPS school uh, uh, region and made it, made it successful. We think if you can do arithmetic, it's not quite as good as doing reading, writing, and arithmetic, but it, it'll really make a big difference. And so uh, there are lots of things that are, that are happening. There are some, some other steps. Um, what about the global piece of this? Uh, we have lots of things going on globally, as we should. Most of our undergraduates, of course, come from the Tri-County area uh, surrounding us. And we want them to have a, wow, I'm really green now. I don't know why. But, exceedingly green. <laughs> My screen doesn't look that way. Uh, but we have programs in the Americas and Europe and a uh, small amount in Africa. We should have more, I think. And in Asia. And uh, 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 Walter referred to the fact that I had given one talk before. Here's my final slide for, for those of you who, who don't remember my talk from 2003, uh, November 4th, which happens to be my wife's birthday, by the way. Um, and I asked, uh, uh, what's next as of 2003? And, and at that time, some of you may remember World Bridge. Anybody remember World Bridge? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted, uh, because there was very, very modest uh, effort in, in China, uh, I wanted to expand in that direction. And, uh, so I, and I referred to some activity that was currently under, underway. That activity is seated at the end of the table in, in uh, Yuming, who had taken uh, some of her students. She was the, ch the Chinese program at that point. Uh, I believe you were the only one, right, at that point. She was a, a half-time instructor of Chinese 101, 102, or whatever we call it. And, uh, but she took a group of students on a study abroad program to China. Now, this was not your grandmother's study abroad program. You know, the, the traditional study abroad program would be, okay, your rich parents in Bloomfield Hills would buy you a ticket to Beijing. Uh, you take a course in Chinese at Beida, Beijing University. You go to the Forbidden City, climb the Great Wall, come back and you say, I know China. And to which I say, Bu Dui, not true, not so. She took her students to a farm in Liting Province, uh, Liting County, Hebei Province, and they, they had no ceramic toiletry. They slept on a con. They fed the pigs. 
they, they taught the kids. And so uh, I wanted to, uh, I proposed at that point, let's have a more balanced student exchange. Uh, I, I wanted to, to encourage undergraduate visits, both from Wayne State to China, but also from China to Wayne State. I've done half of that so far. Uh, cultural as well as scientific exchanges. We've made a good deal of progress with that through the Confucius Institute. And then uh, I thought that it would be really good if we could have some some Chinese undergraduates do a service learning program here where they would work with kids from Detroit. That was my idea. So far, we haven't done that, but we're, we're hoping to one day. Uh, before I went to China to try to, to, to promote this to some of the officials of the Chinese government, uh, I told some, some folks that I'll, I'll refer to in a moment about a wonderful uh, program that we've had for uh, over 50 years now, the junior year in Munich program. Look at it, 56 colleges and universities are run out of Wayne State. Did you know that? Uh, they range all the way from Bowdoin College, is it in there, I believe, yes it is. Uh, all the way from Bowdoin and Bates in Maine to Western Washington in, in the far northwest of, of the state of Washington and uh, uh, minor colleges such as Harvard uh, University in the process. In fact, the guy who was Peter, I don't know if he still is, but uh, I lifted this at the time from, a, from the JYM website. And at the time, uh, Peter Burgard, who was the director of undergraduate studies at Harvard University says, I've been a fan of the junior year in for years and always advise Harvard students to choose this program. Not bad. After many years as director of undergraduate studies at Harvard, experience with students who've chosen various study abroad programs and now having established my own summer program, in Munich, and thus having had a chance to become even better acquainted with a junior year in Munich, I'm firmly convinced that it's by far the best study abroad program in Germany. So we at Wayne State know how to organize uh, other colleges and universities in terms of doing study abroad enterprises. And that coupled with the program I just mentioned that, that uh, uh, Professor Ming uh, was, uh, was running, this is a home stay a uh, collage of, of, of things going on, but uh, in the lower left-hand corner of this, the, there are uh, students teaching kids in rural China, in, in Liting uh, County. And of course, they get to see everything from, from pigs and uh, grave sites in the, in the farm territory to climbing the Great Wall, and they, get, they even get some credit about this. Uh, here's the, here's from a, uh, I think these came from a, uh, the next year or two years later, but uh, uh, when when they lived with a family uh, in in Latin, uh, they lived in a compound. That's the way a family unit is structured in China, and they had been visiting the elementary school kids, and the middle school kids, and the high school kids during the week. And this was the last day they were going to be there. And at five o'clock in the morning, I think it was, or something like that, the little kids are rapping on the window saying, "Can the Americans come out and teach us some more?" Now, you, you, this is the upper left. You see a bus in the background. You might think, oh, well, they bus these kids in. No, that bus was for our students to go back to, to catch the train. They walked in carrying their stools and their primers. And there's, that's a Wayne State student, Wayne State students that are, are teaching. These, these are your eyes. This is how we say it, and so on. Great experience, and beautiful children, and all working hard to, to learn, learn English. Now, why do you think? Uh, learning English might be a poverty alleviation tool. Well, if you think about it, uh, you know, mathematics certainly makes a huge difference for kids in urban Detroit in their overall capability. In China, uh, education is still the, the, the key to getting out of the boondocks and getting out of poverty. Uh, that you've got to go to college, you've got to go to university. In order to get into a university in China, uh, you have to pass a national exam, the Gaokao exam. The Gaokao exam's got five parts to it. One of those parts is, guess what? English. So if you don't have a good English teacher, you don't think you have a chance, a prayer. And so these kids have the same low self-expectation that a Dante Wilson would, would have in Detroit. They think, 